and we are delighted, that's a uh, local pickle term, um, that all of you have chosen to join us for this presentation. I extend a special welcome to the rest, uh, representatives of NASBA, um, whose Center for the Public Trust is bestowing this award on Bill today. Truthfully, if Bill had his way, we would probably not be assembled here at this time. He is not the sort of guy who relishes this kind of attention. All right, that's the end of the pickle language. Okay, relishes and don't like all stuff like that. But, you know, if you're not from Mount Olive, this is pickle country. I mean, it really, honest to goodness, is. You can smell it coming into town. And it's, it, it smells strange if you're coming in. It smells like money if you live here. <laughs> My father explained that to me uh, very vividly. He was in the uh, paper business. And papers are a whole lot more odious than pickles, I promise. But as we were driving into town where they had a, a, a paper plant, he said, it's okay, it smells like money. And we were all okay after that. Seldom um, will we have an opportunity to acknowledge what Bill means uh, as thoroughly as we're going to this afternoon. And as, as, uh, as much as he is oriented to give credit to others, and he, he sheds it like a duck. I mean, we'll try and give him credit and it'll just roll off onto other people. He's just going to have to sit here and take it today. And that will be the most fun part of this whole thing, is just to watch Bill have to sit there and take all this credit, which he deserves, by the way. The success of Mount Olive Pickle is in large part a reflection of Bill's leadership over the last number of years. But success here is measured by more than just the bottom line. The company's roles as profitable enterprise, progressive employer, valued corporate citizen are all hallmarks of Bill's vision and guidance. He's quick to give credit to his management team and the employees of the paper company, and they have played a huge role. There isn't any doubt about that. But he is the leader, and he has set the tone for how this company has operated. Following the likes of Billy Walker, who I saw just a minute ago, in the back, right over here, who set the tone before him. He's a man of exceptional character who lives and leads by values that speak to commitment, accountability, fairness. We appreciate his leadership. We appreciate his open and honest way of dealing, his approach to employees and shareholders and vendors community leaders, many others. We appreciate his, uh, his probing, pointed questions that get to the heart of the issues. We appreciate his practical viewpoint and his consistent application of common sense. We don't make rocket ships or bridges or anything else here. We make pickles. It's not, you know, they are not huge products. They're important products. They are particularly important in, in Mount Olive for the reasons that we started off talking about. They've provided generations of workers with a good working environment, with an opportunity for housing, opportunity to educate their children, and to provide for a comfortable retirement. Bill understands and appreciates the role our company plays for employees and for the greater community beyond, and you'll hear more about that. He leads for the benefit of what's truly important, family, company, and community. He leads his life the same way, based on those values. His involvement in the community speaks to the things that are important to him, the Tuscarora Council of Boy Scouts, Mount Olive College Foundation, the Center for International Understanding, the Wayne Economic Development Alliance, the Bryan Foundation, his church, First United Methodist of Mount Olive. In those organizations, he brings to bear the same intellect, 
the same kind of application of common sense that we so appreciate here. We need many more corporate leaders in America just like him, but we're happy that we've got him here. Let me turn the program over now to Lisa Alisa, Executive Director of the NASBA Center for the Public Trust. As Executive Director of the NASBA Center for the Public Trust, it is my honor to be here on this very special occasion. The Center for the Public Trust was established to foster trust in American corporations. Our goals are to affirm and encourage what's right, showcase best practices, and promote a positive perspective. One of the ways in which we achieve these goals is through our Being a Difference Award. We created this award to recognize individuals like Bill Bryan who truly inculcate ethics into their lives and wholly encompass the creation of an ethical workplace. When I was preparing for this evening's ceremony, I thought of a poem I learned from my son, and it's by Shel Silverstein. It's entitled, I Asked the Zebra. And here's a little of how it goes. I asked the zebra, are you black with white stripes or white with black stripes? And the zebra asked me, are you noisy with quiet times or are you quiet with noisy times? Are you happy with some sad days or are you sad with some happy days? Are you good with bad habits or are you bad with good habits? And it became so clear to me that Bill Bryan is a great man with strong ethics, and an ethical man with great strength in his convictions. The culture Bill Bryan has created at Mount Olive Pickle is exemplary and a model for all other organizations. The Being a Difference Award is for those who do not simply aspire to make a difference, but truly are a difference, no matter how you look at it. And now, I believe, uh, Barton will join us. I uh, will not say as many words as I had planned to. Mal and I talked on the phone this morning, and we did not want to make Bill into this angel and angelic form here. And uh, so some of the things Mal has already said that I was going to say. But this award, I uh, nominated Bill for this award several months ago, and one thing that some people have not said NASPA stands for the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy. It is the arm for all the state boards, which are the regulators for a county. And it is the association that they're all members of. And I was fortunate to serve as chairman one year, along with Mr. Nathan Garrett, who is in our audience from Durham. Nathan also won this same award several years ago. So um, we are very pleased to be here and uh, I was very pleased to nominate Bill. Bill, all of us know from here, grew up and came back to Mount Island, worked in his father's business, and at the same time, I was trying to coerce him into staying in the public accounting. But I lost, and Pickle Plant and the community won. And I mean that sincerely. Bill leaves Mount Island Pickle Company using a moral compass grounded in integrity, a sense of fairness, and a deep commitment to family, company, and community. Bill encourages those same values from his employees and vendors and shareholders. Bill makes decisions based on what is right and what is fair to all. Bill encourages his management team, as Mal has said, to be involved and to come to him with ideas sometimes good, sometimes bad, but always doing their homework to be prepared to go forth with what they're going to do. You have to take risks. Bill has always supported the community along with Mount Olive Pickle Company. Even when Johnny was president, they supported it all the time and they have continued to support the community. And it's not just the community of Mount Olive, it's the community of Wayne County and the state. 
they do a great job of supporting and providing several thousand dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in money and product every year. And it's not just once a one time, but it's continuous. Bill, probably one of the biggest things that was his um, test when he became, after he became president of Mount Olive Company, was in 1999 when there was a national boycott of Mount Olive Pickle Company, part of a union corporate campaign waged by the Toledo, Ohio based Farm Labor Organizing Committee called FLOC. There was a five year boycott that was resolved in 2004, and through the boycott, Flock sought to organize the migrant farm workers who are employees of independent North Carolina growers. Corporate campaigns by their nature are ugly affairs. They are designed to publicly embarrass their targets in front of key stakeholders. In Mount Olive's case, Flock and its supporters organized pickets and leafleting in front of grocery stores around the country. They led marches at shareholder meetings of Mount Olive customers ran letter writing and email campaigns, and staged public events in strategic Mount Olive markets designed to attract optimum negative media attention. They also sought to energize the religious community to take action and support the boycott, successfully garnering the sanction of several denominations, including Bill's own United Methodist Church. The rhetoric used was often inflammatory and misleading. Supporters shared stories of farm worker tragedies, of poor farm worker living and working conditions in North Carolina to support their cause. But the example cited generally had little or no connection to Mount Olive or the business practices of the growers who supplied Mount Olive Pickle. Bill faced the challenges of Flock's boycott with his characteristic openness, grace, integrity, and grit. His was a principled response and consistent with the way Mount Olive Pickle has always conducted its business. The company respected the right of suppliers and their employees to make their own labor decisions without interference from Mount Olive Pickle Company. Bill willingly engaged advocate groups and individuals in conversation and respectful debate, believing that all sides benefit from the full and fair presentation of the facts. More than one boycott supporter who encouraged Bill who encountered Bill was amazed that his telephone calls came directly to him and were not routed through his executive assistant. This has always been the case. Bill felt strongly that the boycott supporters needed to see Mount Olive Pickle as it is, a company that strives to act honorably with its various constituent groups and not as a monolithic, unresponsive corporate entity portrayed by Flock. Bill faced hostile audiences on a number of occasions. Never once did he lose his temper or his composure. The company at Bill's direction engaged other constituent groups, farmers, farm worker advocates, regulatory agencies, and others to discuss mutual concerns regarding farm worker issues in North Carolina. He earned the respect of Mount Olive's supporters and opponents alike as a man of character and a man of his word. The boycott was ultimately resolved in a manner consistent with Mount Olive's position. The North Carolina, North Carolina Organization of Growers to employ foreign guest workers through the federal H-2A labor program chose to negotiate a historic collective bargaining agreement with Flock. As a consequence, Mount Olive Pickle was able to negotiate a separate agreement ending the boycott. Those are just, to me, that was probably the biggest challenge that Bill faced, other than maybe dealing with shareholders on a daily basis. Uh, because Mount Olive Pickle shareholders have always enjoyed the fruits of the labor of this company, and uh, the Mount Olive community has also. I would like to conclude with one thing that I once read. That I think this speaks to Bill. The true measure of a man is how he treats somebody who can do him absolutely no good. Bill treats all people with humility 
and respect from the chairman of his board to the seasonal employee working on the production line. And now David Costello, who is president and CEO of NASBA and the Center for the Public Trust, who made the award presentation. David. Thank you, Barton. I uh, found out more about Bill than I knew before I got here. It's, it's all good. And it, it's just a tremendous privilege to be here this afternoon, uh, surrounded not only by you, but a host of many other witnesses here. Now, I can tell people back home, thousands and thousands were there. I won't tell them they were pickles. And yes, Mal, for your benefit, one more line. Yes, this is a big deal. Anyway, I know I'll let you hear that one all the time, but I had to say it. And listen, I, I, we were on our way up here today from Hilton Head, uh, left about 9 o'clock, and, and Sally, my wife, keeps telling me, you've got to get a haircut, you know, you look a little rash. I said, okay. I said, they'll have something there around my house. We've got a barbershop, maybe two or three. Well, actually, about 18 to 20 miles down the road, in Spidey's Corner, they have a barbershop. I don't know if any of you have been there. James is his name, I think James Hall. Well, I stopped in, and James and I, we just had a great conversation. Had Sally not been waiting for me, I would probably have been late here because he was a fascinating individual. But in the course of our conversation, I'm telling him I'm going to Mount Olive Field to make this presentation. And he says, oh, well, Mount Olive, yes. Uh, he said, uh, do you know anything about Spivey's Corner and what we're famous for here? I said, no, sir, I don't. He said, well, he said, uh, Mount Olive has its pickles, and we have our hollering contest. I said, hollering contest? Now, does that measure up to the pickle plant? He said, oh, yes. He said, people from all over come to our hollering contest. He said, you going to be here? I said, no, I've got to get back home, but it's certainly tempting. But I want to you know that just 18, 20 miles down the road, something very famous again is happening. And I don't really compare it to what's happening here today. I, uh, I thought about Bill and, and what we're doing here today uh, when I read recently about a lecture series that Elie Wiesel, uh, the Holocaust survivor, very famous Holocaust survivor, author, uh, engaged in in the year 2008. And he was speaking on various college campuses. And he was, the lecture series was titled, The Power of Language for Reconciliation. And all of you know the story of Elie Wiesel and, of course, the Holocaust. And he, he would start his lecture out by saying how uh, the how bad the torment was, how, how we treat each other so badly throughout the world. And he talked for several minutes about uh, the persecutions and how people treat each other badly. But then he concluded his lectures in a most memorable way. He said, but as bad as everything is, and as many disasters as we human beings face, and he said, as, as, as much restoration is needed, he said, I am convinced, and this is a man again who lived the horrors of the Holocaust, he said, I'm convinced that there is much more to celebrate in humanity than there is to denigrate. Isn't that a great line? There's much more to celebrate than there is to denigrate. I know we, in Nashville, on May 1st and the 2nd, uh, we experienced devastating floods. Uh, of course, New Orleans had its uh, Hurricane Katrina. Many of you have experienced those kind of disasters or know people. And then, of course, uh, right now in the Gulf area, just tremendous devastation going on, and yet we still don't know that story. And it's so tempting to denigrate and to, and to cast everybody into one lot and say how bad those people in BP are and how evil they are and, and how bad the, the Corps of Engineers and National was to have lowered the lake levels. And, you know, as much as you want to denigrate, let me tell you right now, the city of Nashville, they came together just like Mount Olive would come together, like most cities come together, and the community comes together, the churches come together, the families come together, and you know what happens? After the flood, the sun comes up and everyone's wrapping their arms around each other, helping each other. The Red Cross came to Nashville st State three days and said, we can't do anything here, you're taking care of each other. So we, we love that about Nashville. I know that's true about Mount Olive. My point is, there's more to celebrate 
than there is to denigrate. Yes, there are going to be natural disasters. There are going to be uh, torments. There are going to be persecutions. But the real question is, what are we going to do about that, people? And what I am so proud about Real Brian is that there is reason to celebrate this man. There is reason to celebrate what you have done in this community, what you have done as Mount Olive Pickle Company in, in this community. I, I just personally think that it's very important to make a living. I really believe that's important. But I believe it's more important to live your making. I'm convinced that Bill Bryan was made for a special purpose. And you, and you people are very fortunate to Mount Olive because you get to experience that. And you have discovered that. And your community has discovered that. So Bill, today we honor you. We celebrate you. And, and we honor you as one who lives his making. And we are so proud of the Center for the Public Trust to give you this award. So come on. The award has presented to Mount Olive Pickle Company, and I think that's because Bill wanted it that way. But we know who is the spirit behind that, who is the leader, and we thank you, Bill, for your ethics and leadership and for the great job you're doing on being a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David, Mal, Lisa, Barton, for your comments. They were very kind comments. And thank all of you for being here today, for braving the elements, the warm weather, the rain. Uh, our farmers need the rain, so I'm not going to complain about it. Our field department could have done a little better job with the timing of it. Uh, but nonetheless, we're glad to have it. I am very honored uh, to have been nominated for this award much less to have received the Being a Difference Award. I accept it on behalf not only of myself, but also of my family and my company, all of which have been intertwined in a very positive way for many years. I offer that the difference that has been made and the difference that will be made in the future is very much a collective, collaborative effort of which I am proud to be associated. David, I want to thank you and your organization for being here today, your staff and yourself. Uh, your organization is making a timely investment through the Center for Public Trust to promote good standards and good news in the accounting profession and in business generally. Otherwise, as we know, a few bad examples do dominate the 24-hour business cycle. And as we see with our company, it is important to acknowledge good behavior, to reinforce good behavior, and to encourage it. And I commend your vision uh, in proceeding with this method of encouraging the standards of the CPA, CPA profession and reinforcing the public trust. Barton, you've been an ambassador for Mount Olive, not only the company, but the community for many years. People know that Barton is very active in our community. Uh, what some of you may not know is that Barton has been active on a state, national, and even an international level, serving on boards and committees, uh, representing the public and the CPA profession, looking at oversight regulations and the type of standards that we want to have out there so that the public does have confidence in corporations and their financial statements and their operations. And he's always promoting Mount Olive wherever he goes. My family is very important to me, and I do want to acknowledge my, my parents, my mother and father. They, <clears throat> they were always uh, supportive and involved. They provided extraordinary examples of good character and values. As many of you remember, my father was very community-oriented. My brother Charles, who is here with his family and I, always knew what their quiet expectations were. And it wasn't uh, do as I say, it was do as I do. My wife, Scotty, we're up. Stand up. Everybody. Scotty's active in her own endeavors, and uh, but she's likewise supportive, always there. 
always with the right advice when I ask for the advice. Uh, I never interject any advice very often when I don't ask for advice, and I appreciate that. And she's had a hand in every significant event, um, and most importantly, with our two sons, Will and Byron, of whom we're very proud. I look around and I see educators, I see business people, I see church people, uh, some local government officials, all people that have, many of these, that have influenced me as I grew up, have been back in the community, and have been supportive of our company. You know, I was, I was very fortunate to be able to come home and find employment with a business that had a strong foundation, a long heritage, and many good people, both past and present. Mr. Witherton, one of the founders of the Mount Olive Pickle Company, called the company a community proposition in 1928. I hope he would be pleased with the way that we have built on the vision he described at that time. It all starts with a simple concept, making a quality product in a responsible way that represents a good value to our customers. And if we do that well, we have opportunities. Opportunities to be a preferred employer, opportunities to be a valued corporate citizen, and opportunities to represent a good investment for our shareholders. My fellow employees have caused our company to be successful over the years. And in turn, our employees have had the opportunity to invest their time, invest some of their financial resources back into the community. And also, very importantly, our employees make a difference every day. They make a difference with the culture of safety that they have developed within our company, and that, and that difference impacts each of their fellow employees. These things happen for a number of reasons. Some of those reasons are that our company has had dedicated very capable directors like Mal and some of you that are seated in the room today that have guided our company over many, many years. We have shareholders who continue to support a locally operated company that maintains an appreciation of its history and its community values. Now, I will say to you that both directors and shareholders, they prefer good financial results. But there was never been any question that the more important thing was to do things the right way. That was never in doubt. Looking back, I would say that uh, my time in public accounting, my accounting education, set the tone for much of my business uh, philosophy and practice. I had a professor at the University of North Carolina, Dr. Junius Terrell, one of many good professors that I had during that time, he taught uh, auditing, and he, uh, he stressed the professional expectations. Objectivity, integrity, due care. He was relentless, and he did it with a great passion. And I have encountered many people that have had that kind of influence over time. There was one tenant uh, that was a particularly a key tenant. A CPA must be independent in fact and in appearance. And I really have taken the concept of in fact and in appearance and utilized it in many situations within our company. Uh, the people that work with me hear that phrase on a fairly regular basis. And I think it is very important and I think it's part of what this award is about. I want to thank you for being here today. The award is a great honor, but you honor me with your presence and I certainly appreciate your time. It is my hope and my intention that we will continue to be a difference in the coming years. Thank you. Association of State Boards of Accounting, and particularly the Center for Public Trust, for their public trust program in particular, 
put more broadly for the standards of the county, the work that they do there, which gives us all uh, a uniform basis on which to deal with companies within which with which we do business and in which we invest. And without that, we wouldn't know where we are. So thanks for setting the roadmap for us. Um, thanks to all of you who came to participate. Thanks to the um, founders and former leaders of this company. And thanks for being a different to you. Uh, just a quick reminder, there's a uh, reception Bill's honor at uh, Barton Baldwin, Brendan Barton home and their maps here somewhere after on the table on the table okay we stand adjourned and thanks to all <laughs>